For many people around the world, Islamic State is a group that is fading into history, the cause of terrible times between 2014 and 2019, when violence exploded beyond the borders of Iraq and Syria, and the world watched as extremists took land, captives, and many, many lives. But here in northeastern Syria, an area controlled by the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces, IS remains an ongoing threat from inside prisons, camps, and shadowy sleeper cells. After the extremists were defeated, there were fewer terrorist attacks, but now the numbers are starting to increase. There is more IS activity. He says makeshift prisons are packed with 12,000 alleged IS fighters from around the world. Prisoners, with the help of supporters on the outside, often attempt jailbreaks. Inside the prison, there is also an ongoing human rights crisis. Besides overcrowding, none of these men have been charged with a crime in the years they have been locked up. Mm -hmm. Yes, people may be saying that this is the best kind of punishment, nothing like this. Mm -hmm. no, not knowing what's coming tomorrow. Tens of thousands of women and children from Iraq, Syria, and more than 50 other countries also live in detention centers in northeastern Syria, where they still follow IS's extremist rules. Since the beginning of the year, military authorities say, more than 70 people have been murdered in this camp. Authorities say the murders were punishments from women who have appointed themselves the IS religious police. Meanwhile, when boys in the camp turn between 12 and 14, they are taken from their families and moved into another detention center, a school intended to de-radicalize them. Teachers say, in some sense, this is working. At first, when boys get here, they have no focus, but after some time, they are able to concentrate and want to study more. But detention center administrators say de-radicalization may never help foreign boys, who are just transferred to an adult prison when they turn 18. They come from dozens of countries, and the boys say their only hope is to go home. Authorities here have repeatedly called on the international community to take back their citizens, help stage trials, and rebuild the region. The threat may be local now, they say, but as the crisis deepens, it could easily become global again. Heather Murdoch, VOA News, Northeastern Syria.